Park North High School's a cutie field house for tonight. The Golden Raiders take on the Manitowoc ships in Wall of Fame induction night. Kayla Tetschlag, outstanding athlete from North High, is being inducted at halftime. We look forward to bringing that to you. Chris, let's talk a little bit about tonight's game. Manitowoc comes in 1-5, North 2-4. I don't think it's going to be a close game, though. We don't, huh? You don't think it's going to be close. Well, they've had one common opponent. The one common opponent is Ash Wabanon. North lost to him. Manitowoc did beat him by two. So I don't know. Uh, we are talking about two teams I think are still trying to bind themselves. You know, you look at, you know, I was looking at the stats for Sheboygan North. My gosh, they have like 14 guys that have scored this year already. I think uh, Coach Worth's still trying to find what he's got for this year. And, uh, you know, it's still only December. And what's, what's to bring for Sheboygan North is yet to come. One of the things we saw in the GB game, and I know it doesn't always translate, but North will get out the run. And I think they're going to try and do that. I don't think Manitowoc's capable of doing that kind of running, and that's what good people get from tonight. Yeah, I think you're 100% right. You're talking about a Sheboygan North team that likes to press and run, and then you got Manitowoc is kind of like big and lanky and tall, so it's the front line of Manitowoc versus the speed and the the quickness of Sheboygan North and whichever one turns out better is going to probably get the win and hopefully it's going to be North especially at home. Trent Witter, Trent Witter could be a difference maker. He's averaging uh, 19 points a game and uh, he's a really good shooter. Yeah, he is a good shooter. I think he was first or second in the league last year in threes and he started off this year and he couldn't put any balls in the hoop. And even if you look at his stats now, he's about 25% from three-pointer. Uh, I got to see him the other day when we were throwing that little white ball around a little bit, and he said, oh, I'm starting to feel a lot better and more confident in my shooting. And, and as he goes, I think the team goes too. And you're right with, what, 18 points, 19 points a game? Yeah, 19-3 actually I got out of the website. Uh, Tanner Jancourt and Max Schmidtke are a couple of guys that are good uh, complementary players and they can score. Yeah, they're, they're a team that's, like I, I said before, they got a whole list of guys, and they're all about the same. They're, they're not really tall, but they're all really athletic and things. And, and I, as I said a minute ago, I still think Coach Worth is trying to find his rotation, who the guys he's going to expect to play. I mean, if you look at their roster, they got like 17 guys. Yeah. I talked to him earlier in fall. He said, yeah, we're going to keep a lot of guys and play a lot of reserve games. You look at the JV, they're just full of guys. I think these is, this is a program that's just trying to – put itself together and get better as the season goes on because you know at first it was a little struggle for North but you know they, they've got picked up a couple wins lately which which I think that's what coach wants. One thing that you can say is they've got good athletes and uh, once you get it figured out in terms of your rotation what players play well together and you know get those kinds of things worked out that can make a big difference as you move along through the season. Yeah, it is. And as I said, there's guys on the end of the bench that are probably just as good as the other ones. And, you know, there was kids earlier in the year that weren't playing at all, and then they're, they're playing. And then some of the kids that are playing in the middle, and they try different things like that. And uh, like I said, with all these athletes and things like that, just to, to try to build some type of chemistry and uh, something that you're going to feel for the second half of the season, I think is what he's trying to work on. Braden Baedeker, Braden uh, Breaker and Josh Huffman and uh, Will D. Romando are a couple guys that are averaging, all three of them are averaging over eight points a game, but those are guys that you got to depend on. And uh, the numbers aren't real great, but uh, you never know game to game who's going to show up. Yeah, I know the six kid record from uh, Manitowoc, he's a, he's a pitcher too. He's a really good pitcher. I know he's up for all conference, and so he's a real good athlete. And I said, when, you, when he's got 6'5 going for him and he's got some length and he's averaging in double figures, I mean, that's somebody probably that North is going to have to focus on. And again, we've said it before, and it's going to be all the same thing we see every time we say North. They're not very tall. They're not very big. Uh, most of their kids are, are right around 6'1", 6'2". So defending the post and things and keeping kids like Brecker for Manitowoc uh, off the glass and, and out of the paint, I think, is important. So you could say it's the height against the uh, speed. The speed and the running. And you watch uh, North. They're going to be pressing all over the place. And for Manitowoc over the past few years, that's been a struggle for them. They seem to turn the ball over. When they turn the ball over, Manitowoc yeah, is in yeah, trouble. Yeah, I remember over the years they've had that problem. We're going to step out, and uh, when we come back, we'll have the starting lineups and the tip-off for tonight's game. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Oh, sweetheart. Can I give you a hand? 
Nothing said. I got it. Okay. I'm gonna go fix the lamp in your room. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you. You make me wear my bike helmet. You taught me never to run with scissors. And to follow the swimming rules. You tell me to stay away from drugs. To always buckle my seatbelt. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules. Now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Got a quarter? Cornell and the Sheboygan North Eye Golden Raiders coached by Eric Worth. Here's your starting lineup first for the ships from Manithwoc. Number four, Mason DePirac. Number 12, Jared Lensmeyer. Number 13, Josh Hoffman. Number 25, Braden Broker. Number 31, Will De Raimondo. And now the starting lineup for your very own Sheboygan North Eye Running Raiders. Number four, Tanner Sauer. Number 15, Max Schmidtke. Number 24, Brent Witter. Number 33, Steve Sokolowski. And number 51, Tristan McGoldrick. Tonight's officials, Patrick Mildebrand, Justin Rohde, and Mark Oderstadter. These individuals are assigned by the WIA North High School and the Fox River Classic Conference. Their experience and integrity qualify them to administer the rules of the game. Tonight's athletic training services provided by Purveya Sports Medicine of Green Bay in partnership with St. Nicholas, St. Mary, and St. Vincent Hospitals. Tonight's athletic trainer, Mr. Chris Lenz. Purveya Sports Medicine, expert care for active people. Mentioned comes in with a uh, one and five record. North is two and four. North controls the trap tap, and they've got uh, the first uh, possession on offense. Both teams in a man are Manitowoc in a man to man. Witter trying to hit Sokolowski underneath, but uh, he couldn't handle it, and we had a tie up. Possession arrow will now point towards North. North trying to work on that uh, quickness, Chris, over Manitowoc, and almost had a turnover there. Manitowoc barely gets it in. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a oh. long night for Manitowoc if they can't break the press. They're gonna get sour on a foul. Wow. Reaching in from behind. That one I would have <coughs> just left go. Uh, 
And it to walk has it in the corner looking to go baseline and uh, coming over to help on defense was Witter. Trying to force the ball in was Jared Lensmeyer. According to our program, Chris, uh, Breaker and DiRimondo are both 6'5". Uh, the tallest starter for North is Sokolowski at 6'4". Witter trying to, and does tap it away, but Manitowoc will keep it. Good just, hustle by the Raiders. Yeah, and I was gonna say, just a nightmare on every inbounds for the ships. I mean, this is varsity. Parker Fogel in. And Witter got a steal, but then we're gonna get a jump ball. It should be Norris ball. This is varsity basketball. If you can't get a simple inbounds under the basket, uh, inbounds uh, after basket, it's gonna be a long night. Double screen, Schmidtke was open, passed up the shot. Looks like Manitowoc is, uh, they're still in there man-to-man -man defense. Schmidtke, the left-hander, high bouncing ball is off, no good. He gets the tap back and puts it up and in. North scores the first basket of the game. Had a nice little chat with uh, Max before the game, Chris. He's planning on going with a school for uh, golf course management. He's uh, really into golf. Deep three bounces off no good by Dopiak. Witter's shot is no good. North comes away with the rebound. Their second offensive rebound in a minute and a half, and Matwalk's supposed to be the bigger team. Good skip pass by Schmidtke to uh, Witter, but he again not able to put the three, three ball down. A little give and go, and the basket is up and in. That one by uh, Brecker. Yeah, he's the guy to watch all night. Oh, almost double dribble. Like, yeah, it yep. was. <clears throat> McGoldrick on the double dribble. 15.56 left. We're all tied up at two. No graphics tonight, so we got to call the score more frequently, Chris. Gee and uh, you called it Manitowoc having trouble throwing the ball in. <clears throat> I see. Uh, Coach Christensen is on the staff for Manitowoc. He was the Manitowoc coach for a number of years. Yeah, he's a good one. Witter driving to the basket but couldn't get it in. Good defense by Manitowoc that time. Slow start to uh, Brent Witter's game, Chris. Good ball movement by the ships, but North up to the task. Good defense. Three ball is good. That one is in by Huffman. I know, but that was good defense and hustling on every play. I guess just a little better patience for the ships. Uh, Sokolowski turns it over. Witter trying for the steal, couldn't get it. Short shot is off, no good. That one was missed by uh, DiRimondo. Then a three ball miss. DiRimondo puts it up and in on the putback and he's fouled. There you see the replay. <clears throat> McGoldrick on the foul. Seven to two. There's, like I said, <laughs> KT here for his sister, KT. Yeah, the touch All the here. KTs are here. 
Shot is no good. Sauer trying to save it. They're gonna give it to Manitowoc. Ooh. Wow, tough break. Missed free throw, but Manitowoc keeps the possession. Kratz throwing it in. Sauer playing the tight D on Lensmeyer. Look at the pressure. Can the ships handle the pressure? Skip pass to a wide open shooter. It's no good. Manitowoc gets it right back. And they call traveling underneath. Austin Kratz shuffled his feet. 14 18 left in the half. Manitowoc up 7 to 2. Austin binds in, gets a little give and oh. go, and a shot is blocked, but there's a foul called on Brecker. I'm pronouncing it Broker, so we'll do the same. It's been a 7 nothing run, Chris, by Manitowoc, and it continues on the missed free throw. Uh, very flat on both attempts. Not a good effort there. Remains seven to two. Yeah, a lot of contact. <laughs> foul goes on Jackson Damcott. That's the third team foul on North. No, I think they got 41, Marty, not 21. You're right. Good help defense by Sokolowski. Three ball bounces off, Schmidtke with the board. Damcott going hard to the basket, couldn't get the layup to go, and North is just having a tough go of it. Well, they have the D. Well, bouncing it in was uh, Davis Heinzen. They're just one of seven from the floor, Marty. And we're gonna get over the back foul on Kratz and three turnovers on North, so it's early. I like the D by North that's gonna help them get back in. North's just gotta get a couple of buckets. Witter had a bit of an opening, passed it up for a shot in the lane and couldn't get it in, but he's fouled. Wow. <clears throat> a lot of fouls. Five fouls in five minutes. I got each team with three team fouls. Six fouls in five minutes. Sorry, Marty. And another missed free throw. Oh, we. He's at 87% uh, and he misses. See, and now if you make your free throw, you can set up your press, which I think really helps North. And here we go. Finally, North scores. Nine to three, Manitowoc on top. <clears throat> A runner is up and in by Dopirak. You know, you're making Manitowoc play fast. That's what you want. It'll be all right, North, I, just fine. Got to find this end a little bit, which it's going to come. 
Witter posting up, looking to get something in the lane, but pushes it out to Sauer, and he nails a three. 11 to six. <coughs> Ball capped you. away and out of bounds. I know he's plays for me, but it's unbelievable. Brent Witter, just a junior. Seems like he's been here forever, and he's got a big heart. Works his tail off. Look at him right there in the face of Kratz. Sokolowski just missing, tipping the ball away. Manitowoc keeps it. And that should be an over in the back. Good pressure defense. I'll tell you, Witter's tired. <laughs> He's working hard out there, Chris. Oh yeah, he works hard all the time. <clears throat> Schmidtke coming in for Witter. He's Good. somebody that comes here when his dad comes early to work. He's shooting. I see him in the weight room. When you can't get it north, I see him at Planet Fitness. And he's a D1 baseball player. Hey, do they got a basket at Planet Fitness? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but they got a nice weight room. <clears throat> Sauer working hard on defense, but uh, Manitowoc up to the task that time. You can just see Manitowoc's, all their pass, passes are struggled. You know, some you count to, as a defense too, is not just steals, but taps and deflections. And I think North does a great job with that too. Max Schmidtke on the tip away. Lensmeyer comes in and uh, Doperak uh, checks out. 11-15 left, <laughs> steal. Sauer kicks it back out. Three ball is no good. That shot by uh, Sawyer Pottist. <clears throat> North just down five for as bad as they've been playing offensively. It's because of yeah. their defense. Sokolowski, Damcott had a bit of an opening but didn't take the shot. Sauer, couldn't get it. Schmidtke tries to tap it out to a teammate but Manitowoc comes away with it. Yeah, and a good effort there by Schmidtke. Look at this, nowhere to go. Look at the D. Lansmeyer awesome. got it off, got it back. Kratz way off. But Heinz and comes away with a basket. That's his second hoop, Chris, off the bench. <clears throat> yeah, just get the rebounds, boys. Schmidtke open for a second, couldn't get it in. Pottist over the back. A lot of subs in. Chase Renzelman coming in, making his first appearance of the night. Chase comes in averaging 4.2 points per game. And he's one of those guys, Chris, you were talking about earlier. You know, is he gonna work himself into the rotation or out of it? Yeah, he was starting, I think, earlier. Saw them play Fond du Lac already this year. Parker Fogel back in the game, his second stint in. Shot is blocked, Witter kicks it up to Fogel who kicks it back. Nice pass. Nice feet inside, shot is up and off by Renzelman. But he'll be at the line to shoot a pair. Well we know about Chase's dad, Chad played here. One of the best three-point shooting guys I've ever seen. Took the uh, 93 team to the state finals. And another oh, missed yeah, free yeah. throw. North is one odd of five free throws. 
One out of six. And Witter with a nice push. That a boy, Brent. Schmidtke, no. Witter steps in and gets it to go. One out of six free throws, Chris. Ay, ay, ay. And another turnover. Renzelman almost had it. He picks it up, kicks it up to Sokolowski. He lays it in. Looking for a Manitowoc timeout, and they get it. <clears throat> Manitowoc still up, but now it's 13 to 10. It's going to be a 30-second timeout, Robert, so we'll keep it here. Let's go through the crew real quick. We have uh, Robert Ingram, our director. Richard Bartson up here running camera one. Greg Zablocki running camera two. Chris Wright is my partner, and I'm Mike Martin. Chris, you wanted to talk a little bit about the Wall of Fame induction. Yeah, Kayla Tetchlog, <laughs> unbelievable, 2007. She gra Can it be 10 years already? I know. But, uh, just a wonderful family, and uh, of course, she was a, an excellent basketball player and a really good tennis player. Went on to play at uh, UWGB, uh, led her team here at North to the State uh, Tournament uh, two years, and they got to the Sweet 16 at UW Green Bay. Um, now she's a coach, but we'll talk more about uh, Kayla later. By the way, the plaque is up. <coughs> Was looking at it uh, when I got here tonight. Manitowoc able to break the press that time, but uh, wasn't easy. Lensmeyer looking for something in the middle, couldn't find it. A good swarming D by North. Ball is tipped away from behind, but again, Manitowoc able to come up with it. And nail a three. Making that basket was uh, Josh Huffman. 16 to 10. Sokolowski on the wing. Witter open from the top of the key, got it. Rainbow three goes down for the Raiders, their first second of the night, actually. His 10th on the year. I think he had about 70 <clears throat> in league play last year. So he's a little behind. Yep. Good post defense by Sokolowski. North is scrambling, and there's an over the back foul. That's going to go on Broker, his second. There's eight, 18 Raiders on the roster, Marty. They've already played 10. Renzelman has it on the wing, had it taken away by uh, Lensmeyer. I like where North is just down three, considering you're shooting about 20%. 7.30 left in the first half. Witter got beat on the baseline, but uh, missing the shot was uh, DiRamondo. And then there's a foul called on Heinzen. And that too, he's got to make those layups. <clears throat> Damcott has it on top. Just a three away from a tie, 16-13, seven minutes left. Witter heads down the lane, had it tipped away. Almost could have got called for a charging foul, but no whistle. Uh, good defense by uh, Witter to get back and help on the post area. Jeez. And then we get a foul on Manitowoc's Jared Lensmeyer. Mantwalk just letting North climb right back into this. They have seven turnovers and seven fouls. Well, here's where the free throw making really comes into play, Chris. That was the seventh team foul, and it's going to be the one and one. 
I bet you he makes them both. I 80, hope so. 87%. <clears throat> Nothing to this game, huh, Chris? Nope. Told you he was going to make it. Susie Runnis in the house. Oh, yeah. Susie was uh, the head basketball coach when Kayla, while Kayla was playing. Look at the pressure. Yeah, a lot of pressure, but uh, they're leaving guys open. There's a push not called by DiRamondo. Oh, travel. <clears throat> Another turnover by the ships. It's Manitowoc 16, North 15. They have a chance to uh, get the lead on this trip. Right at the beginning of the game, they scored. They led it two to nothing. Then Manitowoc ran off uh, seven, nine straight points actually. And they're stuck on 16. Six minutes left. They can't. They can't defend. Uh, Turnovers. I think that's his. That's just his first. His first. Thought he had one earlier. Sorry. It's all right. North has their best free throw shooter on the line. Witters made uh, two in a row. See the Horsens that are in the house. What else is new? Well, we don't want them leaving mm -hmm. early, you know, Marty. Yeah, really. Stay till the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> A nice friendly roll, and North has the lead 17 to 16 with 6-11 left in the first. You know, when the balls aren't falling into the hoop, you can always rely on your defense, and that's what North did. Now they've climbed to take the And yeah, they the got lead. a double, double dribble and another violent turnover by Manitowoc. Kratz checking in for uh, Doperak, who's committed two turnovers the last two trips down. Nine for the game. <clears throat> Dessel's in the house. Yep, coach is here, talked to him before. Try and get him on a mic. Yeah, we asked him to come to uh, when you were gone, but he was in Las Vegas, so. Another nicer place than where I was. You were in Arizona, he's in Vegas. Witter trying to dump it down, but it was tapped away. Damcott, after thinking about it for five minutes, shoots it and makes it 20 to 16 north. Rotate up a little bit there. Yeah, a little quicker. Look at Mantwalk. Nobody wants the ball. And with all this pressure, North's only committed four. There's a foul. Yeah, <laughs> Renzelman reaching in. Not a good foul there. Just as I said something, Chase. That's only the fifth foul on North, and Renzi coming out after that foul. Sawyer Pottest in for him. With the ball on the wing is Aaron Lukes. Inside feed to DiRamondo and he misses a short bunny. You know, that's what you gotta have if you're Mantwalk, if you're gonna win this. It Man. looks like Witters fouled again, Chris, who'll be going to the line. You know, that's how Manitowoc's gonna hang in here and win this game is making baskets in the point, or in the paint, excuse me, and they missed them. Norse making all their hay from the line. There's Coach Desatel. There's Coach up in the booth. Try to get him on.
Did he make them both? He did. If he wouldn't have missed that one. <laughs> <laughs> Four shots. No good. DiRamondo getting away with one. He was over the back of a North player and no call. And uh, North gets possession and calls a quick timeout. Two, pardon me, 428 left in the first half. North is up six. Our next game will be Tuesday, January 9th. That's way off, Chris. Notre Dame will be at South. Uh, the next game for the Raiders will be December 28th uh, as they play Green Bay East. That's part of the Raiders shootout. Do you know who the other two teams are? I think. Well, I think Oosberg's yeah, one. I was going to say I'm Oosberg. I'm not sure who the other one is. I think uh, Green Bay East, the old uh, conference team, has been playing a lot of the, the uh, conference uh, teams that they used to play. As a matter of fact, uh, Green Bay East already beat these ships. North bringing it up. So Goldrick has it on the wing. Manitowoc in the man-to-man -man defense. Oh boy, Sokolowski looked like Jay Cutler on that pass. Lukes has it inside, and a whistle on a chippy foul. Didn't look like much. Pottis picks up the foul, that's uh, his second. Renzelman also coming back in for McGoldrick. Good help defense. A lot of pressure, Chris. Good rebound by Max Schmitke over to Sauer to Sokolowski. He puts it up and in. That's the break we've been looking for, Chris, that fast break with the kick yep. up pass. There's a push. They can't handle the pressure. We said it in the opening, Marty. You, you know, said it. Well, You're the prophet, man. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, Manitowoc's been sunk over the last few years. That ship has sunk because they can't take care of the ball. And uh, you're seeing it right here live. Sauer on a drive to the hoop, scoops it up and puts it in. 26 to 16, North up 10, Another and a steal. Three seconds in the lane. Yes. That's unfortunate. Oh. Oh, boy. Well. Which way? Which way? They're gonna give it to North. That's not the right call either. They should have got a foul on Correct. thighs. Yeah, but it was out of bounds on Mantwalk, but there was a push. Renzelman. Shot is up, no good. Had a pretty good look at uh, the bank, but uh, couldn't get it to drop. Another push off. They're not subtle, are they? <laughs> Falls wow. on Steve Sokolowski. That's his first foul. Well, Coach Worst got his group just what he wants. He's got, you know, Mantwalk so frustrated that they got to shove or push to create space so they can dribble. It's just an instinct by their players to create some openings. 
Lutz and has a chance, Chris, to break a 10 point run by the Raiders. Not a first of a one and one. <laughs> and he puts in the second. And the 10 point run by the Raiders is finally broken. It's 26 to 18. North only attempted 19 shots so far, but they've been fouled so much. Winner. He's getting rolling. Now they got 20 shots. But it's their uh, free throw attempts that's also added. 10 second call, they couldn't get across in line in time. Witter has 15 points, Chris. He leads all scorers by a wide margin, I might add. Brooks Walters in the game. Walters open, fires it off the backboard, no good. Schmidtke, bango. <laughs> 32 to 18, Norse's largest lead. Inside to DiRamondo, he misses a chip, little bunny shot. And then they're going to get Schmidtke on the uh, double dribble. Mm. 150 left in the first half. Been a long time since Mantwalk made a basket. That right. Dang it. Nice going, Chris. That's on you, man. We'll never say that again. 32-21. Damcott had it on top, gave it up to Witter. Manitowoc playing pretty good defense this trip. Oh, and out of bounds off North. You know, North <laughs> still on the offensive end is not very sharp, but it's their defense that's just smothering and giving them so many more opportunities than Manitowoc. It'll be interesting to see what the uh, turnover story is, how many by each team. Well, North has seven turnovers, Marty. Walter's playing a tough defense. A good feed into Lukes, but his shot is missed, but he does get fouled. He'll be at the line to shoot a pair. Thirteen turnovers by Mantwalk. Ooh. Aaron Lukes missed that first one, but uh, you know, when you look at him and his release, he's uh, got pretty good form. Yep. I would agree with you, Marty. Put your fingers in the cookie jar. Under a minute, up by 10. North looking to get a little offense this trip. They looked, uh, they didn't look that good the last time down. Play for one, 35 seconds left. Nope. Damn God, no good. What? 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 They must Turnover? Have called a three second or something. Oh Mark. man, I don't like that call. Huh. <laughs> Gee whiz. No, this could be another one where North gets away with a foul. Maybe no. not. Not a 
what's her, what, what are we calling here? Referees North, talking North it had over. The ball. Ball is going to go on damp cut. Wow. North already had the ball. Huh. One and one. <laughs> Mason Doperak. He pops in a couple. See what North does now. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say 20 seconds. <clears throat> Clock running down 15. Under 10. Walters. Schmidtke. Witter. Fadeaway, no good. Damn pot at the buzzer, no good. And we're at halftime with North on top, 32 to 24. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just... Kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs. Totally. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. Totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you guys know statistically friendly kids have more friends? Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know Kayla them, was a four-year sure starter on the, the North High seat. girls Visit basketball team and served as captain for three years. She was a Fox River Valley Conference first team selection for four years and was the conference player of the year in 2005, 2006, and 2007. Kayla was a first team all-state selection in 2007 and second team selection in 2006, her junior year. Kayla's presence in North High basketball helped to propel the team to new heights. In Kayla's junior year, North went to the state tournament for the first time in program history. In her senior year, the team finished runner-up at state with Kayla being named MVP of the tournament. Kayla was also an outstanding tennis player, qualifying for the state meet three times and placing sixth in 2007, her senior year. She was named Elks Athlete of the Year in 2007. She was a member of the National Honor Society from 2003 to 2007. She was also active in many community events to go along with her many athletic accolades. After high school, Kayla attended UW-Green Bay, where she again was a standout athlete and student. As a member of the Lady Phoenix, Kayla was named to the Horizon League Sixth Player of the Year in 2009, first team all-conference in 2010. In 2011, she was named co-most valuable player of the team and Horizon League's co-player of the year. Academically, Kayla made the UW-Green Bay Dean's List all four years and was Division I AAA Scholar Athlete in 2010. In 2011, she was the Cecil N. Coleman Medal of Honor recipient and was awarded the Chancellor's Leadership Medallion. Following her career at UW-Green Bay, Kayla played professionally in Europe for three seasons. During the 2011-2012 season, she played in Belgium, being a member of the first team. In the 2012-2013 season, she played in Luxembourg and was the league's defensive player of the year and was voted forward of the year. 
In Kayla's final year of professional play, she played in Germany again, Defensive Player of the Year and Forward of the Year. Upon returning to the States, Kayla pursued a career in coaching. During the 2015-2016 season, she served as an assistant coach at the University of Sioux Falls. This year, she's serving as an assistant coach and recruiting coordinator at the University of South Dakota. Ladies and gentlemen, Kayla Tetchlog. There, um, there will be a celebration at the Elks Club immediately following the game. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the floor, the North High Drumline.
The North High Drumline. Update from Notre Dame at the half. It's North 28, Notre Dame 27. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. He'll turn it on. Oh, okay. Joining me up in the booth is Kayla Tetchlug, the newest candidate or newest uh, inductee into the North High Wall of Fame. There you can see her. Kayla, one question that I always like to ask the uh, inductee is, uh, what does this mean to you? It means a great deal to me. I feel just really honored to be here tonight and to come back to North to this gym, which I spent a lot of time in, but now haven't been back in a while. But just to see old teammates, coaches, and family and fans. It's just really cool to be reunited with this community. Once you walked into the building for the first time in years, what kind of memories come to mind? It's amazing all the memories that flood back at you, but when I first walk in the gym, you can see the conference championship boards that are lined up on the walls, and to see all the years that we were able to put up on those boards is just really something special, and it's only the tip of the iceberg for all the memories that we made in this place. You didn't get there alone. I mean, uh, no. Susie Runnis, your <laughs> head coach for four years, helped out, and uh, of course your family. Talk a little bit about those assets and helping you to the successes that you've had. Yeah, when I got the phone call about this award, I was so honored and, and just felt so special to be honored by this group and by the committee, but my first thought was, I wish the entire team, I mean, the whole program could be inducted at the same time because even though I was a player on the team, I was a very small piece of what we actually accomplished with this program. So all the coaches that ever worked with me, every assistant, every volunteer assistant, every manager, trainer, and then of course all of my teammates. Everybody played such a big role and I'm so grateful for all of them. We had such a special group, a group that just, that doesn't, great that just doesn't come along all that often. And so to be a part of that and have everybody just buy into what we were trying to accomplish, it was just really special. And you're right, I did not get here alone. So I'm thankful to everybody who came before me and coaches who taught me along the way. I know your family kind of set down the values and things you're supposed to live by, but when it comes to the basketball end, uh, Kyle had a big influence on you, and I heard you talk about him and the impact he's had. Talk about that a little yeah, bit more. When I was thinking of things to say in, in my speech later, it was a lot of memories growing up with Kyle in the driveway and Kyle blocking my shot and not taking it easy on me whatsoever. And really made me the, the tough player that I became. And my dad, of course, was my really first ever coach and really taught us the game. He was a real reason our family got really into basketball. So I think just our family atmosphere, the fact that a lot of us, almost all of us played in the family made it just so special to go to the gym together. And I learned so much from my dad by watching him and my brother by watching and playing against him too. And yeah, they definitely helped me along the way. The one thing I remember about playing with your dad is that he just seemed to make everybody <laughs> around him a better player, which I think is what you do. <laughs> and that's really a testament to how yeah. great a basketball player you are. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. You aren't just a basketball player, though. You played a little bit of tennis here at uh, North and had some uh, outstanding seasons. Well, tennis was such a cool outlet for me because it's more of an individual sport. Now I play doubles, but I still think it's so cool to play a sport where you're really just focused on individually. Like, it's a mental sport, picking yourself up when you hit adversity. And I grew a lot mentally just from playing that sport. I didn't really dedicate a lot of time to it. Don't tell Coach Spielman. He was my coach at the time. But I picked up a racket for about three or four 
four months out of the year, but loved it. And my doubles partner was Lindsay Harrison Irek the whole four years. We had a blast. I really enjoyed playing tennis. That was a great team to be a part of, too. All right, thanks a lot for stopping up, Kayla. We have a second half to play. Go down and sit with your family and Sounds carry good. north to another Thank victory. You. Yeah, go Raiders. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're off and running here, Chris. Schmidtke, bango. Three, Max Schmidtke. Nice way to start the second half. Chris, maybe while we have a little bit of time as we uh, go through first half of this. Sokolowski. Sokolowski for another basket. There you see the replay. Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers by the ships. Oh, another one. Unbelievable. <clears throat> Boy, North really taken to him. Uh, what was the turnover situation in the first half, Chris? Well, I had uh, 13 for the <laughs> ships, eight for oh, the Raiders, the and the bottom line, it just came to the uh, numerous of turnovers by the ships. We knew their size could really make a difference if you could get it into the paint, but the defense has been stifling, and it's gonna be a long 17 minutes for Manitowoc. We uh, talked about at the beginning a violation on North. At uh, one free throw now, it's 38 to 14, largest lead by North. You know, we talked about the size of Manitowoc against the quickness of North. Uh, what's the rebound situation been? Well, I just had to write another turnover. Manitowoc, you need a timeout. That's four turnovers here. Yeah, the offensive rebounds, too, are even at four. You'd think Manitowoc would control the boards, but... Another There's inside there. shot missed, and then uh, picking up the foul is going to be uh, Tristan McGoldrick. Well, you had you had Manitowoc up what, like nine to two or something like that. North scored the first basket, then they ran nine in a row. It was nine to two at one point. They only got 24 now, 40 to 24, 16:45 left, and. Marty said it's going to be a route, and he's right on the way they're going. Manitowoc seems to miss a lot of easy shots, Chris. Witter open for just a second, let it go, but couldn't get it. Schmidtke runs it down. Well, Schmidtke on the turnover for North. Again, the offense has been kind of a struggle for North, but the great defense leads to easy baskets, and they've also been attacking the baskets, so they're getting to the free throw line. It's 40 to 24, North on top. Uh, Witter picks up a foul. North definitely senses they can put a lot of pressure on uh, the ships and still recover when they don't make a steal. Oh boy. There go the Klee girls. Time <laughs> for bed. Time for bed. <laughs> Aaron Luke's in for Manitowoc. That foul on Witter just a bit ago was his second. Double screen for Witter. Could cover up defense by Manitowoc to prevent the shot attempt. Schmidtke open, he nails another one. I have them seven for 18 on threes, North that is. That's the way you do it. Yeah, took, took Took you 20 minutes to figure that out though and it's gonna be too late. 43-26, McGoldrick no good, gets the rebound, put back and couldn't get it to go, but he was fouled. 
Well, Good work underneath the basket by North. And the free throws too is so one-sided. And again, trademark of Coach Tessitel's team too of getting to the basket and now Coach Worst group is doing the same. They gotta do what they can because they're not really that tall. A oh, couple of bricks there, but Sokolowski almost came away with it. And then we get a foul on Sauer. A lot of fouls, Just talking to the Horsons about that at halftime. North was only seven out of 12 free throws, Chris. We get a full 30 second timeout. I think this one's on North. Uh, 15.41 left, north up 17. Chris, go ahead. I was gonna say, nice uh, job with Kayla. And we had uh, pretty much planned out for a interview to be taped and then we were gonna show it as part of our opening. That didn't work out, so she was nice enough to come up in the booth at halftime and uh, nice little chat. As I mentioned, <coughs> it's hard to believe it's 10 years already. Very accomplished, uh, excellent student. You don't even, you forget to mention that part of everything. She was basically, uh, you know, academic. Uh, National Honor Society, yeah, I think all her years at here North. And, and, uh, academic. Dean's uh, List at Green Bay. Yeah, unbelievable. When you watch North and their defense against Manitowoc, I, in some respects, they're also getting into some bad habits, you know, reaching from behind and going for a steal and some of those things. I don't know what your thought is on it. I'm not a big fan of that, but mm -hmm. I like the way they hustle and, you know, they're going for their deflections. And, you know, like I said, they got a scratch and claw for every defensive possession. Oh, boy. See, there's a lot of bumping there, but <laughs> they're gonna call the turnover. Not that I'm counting or anything, but that's... <laughs> you better be counting. <laughs> 19. Whoa. There's Mr. Tetchlog. Dave Tetchlog, dad of... Uh, Kayla. All the KTs, <clears throat> all four. Drive down the lane and... Uh, Damcott's gonna get a couple of free throws for his efforts. Did you count those free throws? How many? North is. North was seven for 12 in the first half, not very good. So far here in the second half, they're one for five with that miss. But they're getting so close to 20 So eight for free throws. 17, that's yeah. not even 50%. No, but it's a lot of free throws for a high school team. Wow. Witter, trying to get it out of there and he gets tied up. Arrow points north's way, so they'll keep it down here. But again, there's Brent Witter hustling to get the offensive rebound and give a reload, oh boy. Sokolowski, good fake of using the screen, goes back the other way and is wide open. That should never happen either in varsity basketball. Someone should be in the paint on defense. Whoa, another high dribble, and then Parker Fogel comes from behind and tips it away. His dad, too, played on a couple state basketball teams here. Tom Fogel? Yep. A couple state basketball teams and uh, three baseball teams that went to state. He played for you, right? Yep. Played baseball at Marion. Another turnover, Aaron Lukes dribbling it on the line. Vogel bringing it up. North looking for an opening. Manitowoc playing pretty good defense. Jankwart, no. <laughs> 
Huffman has it on top, not able to penetrate the lane. But nailing the three was Austin Kratz. Their first uh, three of the half. Radio guys from Manitowoc up in the booth. A lot of bumping and banging, and then finally they call something. Foul on Jackson Jamcock. You know, we talked about <laughs> Renzelman and Fogel and all these guys who uh, either coached or now they have their kids here. Does that mean we're getting older, Marty? Or? Well, for sure. Every you, morning you, I can tell I'm getting older. Well, you you are used to that a little bit longer than I am, because you, you're more of a Sheboygan guy, but kids of people oh. you played with and things. Nice three by Pottist. Another current country you heard from. I actually think that's his second three of the night. I check got this out. One. Only one? Okay. I'll trust you. Yep. But uh, it's just saying, Marty, a lot of kids of oh, people right. you played with. And I remember playing in the City League years ago against a former student from Chilton. Uh, referee coming over to the table. We don't know what's going on there. And four new guys for Manitowoc. What, uh, did I miss something? I know he wasn't happy with Coach Worth, but. It's 48 to 29, North up 19 points. A new high for them. Look at the smothering D. And another turnover by the ships. Losing the ball that time was uh, Braden Brecker. Foul on Manitowoc. Fourth team foul. North has five team fouls so far. There's 12.50 left in the ball game. Parker cutting through the lane, got the pass, but not able to get the shot off. Then the left-hander fires up a three that's no good. <clears throat> Damcott's going to get the foul inside, and Renzelman and Witter and Sokolowski are all, are all coming back Chase in for Renzelman. the Raiders. Chase in for Damcott has three fouls. Lensmeyer was open for a minute, but couldn't get the shot off. Witter stepping out on the baseline, preventing DiRamondo from uh, going to the hoop. Renzelman's gonna pick up that foul. Well, once again, uh, six <laughs> minutes into the half and 11 fouls. Manitowoc's next game, Chris, is also on Tuesday December 29th, they go, uh, well, Fond du Lac actually will come to Manitowoc. Fond du Lac's way down too, Marty. So it could be a good game. Yeah, North clocked them by 16. A nice change of the hands on the drive by Sauer, and he picks up a foul. He'll be shooting a pair. Foul on Josh Hoffman on the line for North. Jankwart on the line, pardon me. Yeah, uh, Fond du Lac <coughs> struggling. Well, there was a school that had good teams, it seemed like, every oh, year. Yeah. Holy cry. Well, <coughs> the Deaners went through there, and that was a war. Dessel versus Deaner. 
I was watching a college game uh, last week, I believe it was, and uh, they were talking about a player on one of the teams, and he said, you know, he looks just like Travis Diener. <laughs> well, Tom Diener, brother of the uh, former coach at Fond du Lac. Dick Diener. Dick Diener, yeah. They play, he's been around the coach, and now he's at Cedarburg. His son is an outstanding player at Cedarburg. I think Cedarburg is ranked like sixth or seventh in Division Two, but his son, Tom's son that it is, he's a player. He can fill it. There's some really good <coughs> basketball players in our state. Is uh, Gordy Zastro's son that plays at uh, Manitowoc, Manitowoc Luther. Lutheran, think he's the best of the Diener sons? Of the, of the uh, Zastros? The Astros no, sons? not necessarily. I know he's ranked like 15th or 17th as okay. a, in his class, and we'll just have to wait and see. North continuing to press Boy. and intercepting it is Max Schmidtke, and he's gonna be fouled. Well, Manitowoc's got uh, three shots off in uh, six and a half minutes. It's 50 to 31 with 11.34 left. And nine turnovers. Skip pass over to Jankwart. His shot is no good. Or that was Sauer, pardon me. Sokolowski's shot is off, and then it uh, goes off a North player. Good news is it's... Uh, call the foul on Renzelman instead, and Manitowoc will go to the line. So they'll be shooting free throws, Chris, with 11.15 left. It's a long time. Oh, boy. Both teams are going to be in bonus. And another turnover by North. Good movement, DiRamundo again missing a bunny shot. Witter comes away with it. His sixth rebound. <clears throat> He came in averaging nine. Sauer, no good. And Witter. There's Brent Witter, 6'1", averaging nine rebounds a game. That's heart, Marty. It is, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Witter gets the first of a one and one. You get another one. North up by 20 now, 51 to 31. He has 18 points on the night. There's that push again. Whoops. Witter picks up his third foul. And Manitowoc will go to the line. Josh Huffman is a guy we haven't heard a whole lot from, Chris. No. He did have a nine points at halftime, but uh, he hasn't scored yet. He's just a sophomore, Marty. Oh boy. Nice cut through the lane by Schmidtke. Turns to get the little 
chip shot, but uh, couldn't put it in. I don't think so. Nope. Tipped out of bounds. North will have it. It says here Kayla was a four-year letter winner in basketball and tennis. She could play with us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, went to state and tennis, too. Schmidtke passed up the three-pointer and couldn't drive the lane, but Damcott does, but couldn't get the layup to go down. Fifty-two to thirty-two. Shot is no good by Brucker. Don't hear much from him and him either. No. Bang. Schmidtke with a three. Third of the half. Wow, we don't shake hands with him. He has fourteen points. He's got three threes. Manitowoc only has made two baskets in the whole half. That's got to go the other way. That's got to go the Whoa, other way. Oh, they're getting north. Ties with the foul. I thought he got taken down. Yeah, I thought so too. Yeah, two free throws. North has more than 10 fouls in the half. 9.07 left. Hey, interviews tonight. Yes, sir. You'll be going to work. Free throw is off. 55. 32. Damcott with a three. They got five threes to match their five threes in the first half, Marty. 25 point lead. Kratz, no good, but he's fouled. Chris not happy. Can't go two possessions without a foul. Leeds, at least it's not as bad as that girls game last week. Oh, oy, my. Oy, oy. Oy, oy, 32 oy. fouls in the first half, people. 65 <clears throat> in the game. 50 free throws in the first half. Most games last about an hour and 20 minutes. That first half lasted <laughs> over 50. A game like that? Could cause the city to stop paying us by the hour. <laughs> Great hustle. Damcott was on the line. Parker Vogel, in for Parker Vogel coming in. Sauer had a good run while he was out there. Little jump shot in the lane is no good. Boy, if Manitowoc had all those baskets they were missing in the lane, it'd be a ball game. 58 to 35. Who got that one? Uh, Heinzen, number 11. Very rare offensive rebound for them too. Damn cut. Scores. 60 to 35. Kratz trying to get down the lane but couldn't. Three ball bounces but won't go in. McGoldrick with a good hustle to uh, save it.
Fogel pulls up and nails a 12 footer. Sixty-two to thirty-five. Famcom with his fourth. Another foul on North. Come on, you guys. Damcott with his fourth. This is the kind of win you want right before Christmas, Marty. This is so you can go and tell your grandmas and grandpas and uncles, and say, oh, we had a great game. We won by 25 points, and we're getting to be on a roll. It's a feel-good win leading into Christmas, and uh, with the tournament coming up next week, next week here. Robbie England and Toulon Vu check in for their first action of the night. Sokolowski with good hustle. Uh-oh. Hey, you guys can't leave the side of my wife. <laughs> Traveling called on North. And the Horsens are leaving the building. That means North's going to win. <laughs> And uh, up 27, we're still laying the wood. Not always oh. a big fan of that, Marty. Heinzen looked like he had a guy open, but didn't want to pass it. Still <clears throat> pressing. Gary Klein from the presses here. A lot of familiar faces, Chris. Yep. A lot of them came to see Kayla. Oh, for sure. For sure. Vu on the foul. Guess who's coming out? Carla. Another KT in the house. Uh, oh, <laughs> man. Come on, Huffman, put it in. You know, we make a little circle, and when they make the free throw, you exit out. There's a lot of circles. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of fouls and free throw attempts. 62 to 36. 617 left. Renzelman had an opening, didn't take the shot. Witter kicks it out, a three ball is up and in by Robbie England. Thirty point lead by the Raiders a new high tonight. Alec Messman in the game for the ships. There was a, when I was coaching baseball way back at Chilton, there was a kid from Two Rivers, Craig Messman, was a really good pitcher. I wonder if uh, this is any relation. Full timeout. We'll take a short break with 541 left. Norse up, 65-36. Hey, going out like that? Yeah, why? Well... <laughs> What would the neighbors think? <laughs> I see you! Come look at Mr. Feather! Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? Bark, bark, bark! We're just playing! We're just playing! I'm trying to get you out of here! Even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect Either parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. 100. Manitowoc's going to throw it in. Lensmeyer 
Huffman, pardon me, tossed it in. The ball is stolen by Witter. He lays it up and in. He has 20. That was 19 and 20 right there, Chris. Twenty-three turnovers for the ships unofficially. So have they done better in the second half no. or not? No. Okay. They came out at halftime and it was, was much worse. Under five minutes left in the ball game. Luke has it on top for uh, the ships. Manitowoc playing for one. <laughs> well, at least they're not turning it over. Just that good defense. All the kids from North can play D. Messman has it on the wing for Manitowoc, and then we get a five second call, another turnover. Brooks Walters comes in, along with uh, Tulong Vu. Anglin still in the game, Renzelman still in the game, and Parker Vogel still in the game. Don't dribble it. Renzelman wants to shoot it. Pretty good defense by Manitowoc to prevent the drive. Renzi spots an opening, couldn't get it. Now, Renzi had a couple free throws in the first half, Chris and it wasn't pretty. Missed them both. Let's see if he can get a free throw here. How did Dan Dockage say that? He's got the prettiest shot that never goes in. <clears throat> see you at the Elks. KT. Oh boy. Wow. That's 0 for 4 tonight. Down to 320 left in the ball game. Oh, that's an over and back. cheating. You know, when you break down the game into its simplest components, you can't get any simpler than passing the ball and catching the ball. And Manitowoc has a real hard time with that. Well, they're just <clears throat> terrible. Kick. Well, they can't handle the pressure, Marty. They're just, you know, you got to face that all the time, and you got to handle that when you get to the varsity level. And they're not doing a very good job of it. No, not at all. KT leaving the house. <laughs> See you at the Elks. Oh, nice cut. There's an excellent example, Robbie. Catch the ball and you got a layup. For two. Norris got a number of turnovers themselves, so. England playing the good defense. Gets the ball right back for North. It's 67 to 36, North up by 31. 240 left in the ball game. England, Oops. picking it out to Walters, whose rainbow shot won't go in. Jackson Pottist in the ball game, number 53. 
that one of your boys? No, that's not Jackson. I don't think that, that's not Jackson. I think the program says yeah, 53. Yeah, I know, but that's not him. Jackson's no longer playing. That's somebody from the JVs, Marty. Okay. Wow. We've had this buzzing in our ear the entire game, and it's turned into something worse than a buzz. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I can't wait to take this headset off. Jeez. Rattle some of those wires over there. So now it's worse. <laughs> it's, if I don't touch them. <laughs> One thirty-five left. Well, it's getting better now. Walters, oh, rims out. Vu threw to the lady in the first row, but it was she, intercepted but by. But she caught it, unlike <laughs> ships could always do. Huffman had it for a minute. Messman on the wing. North continuing to play good defense, and then Heinzen with another turnover by the ships. They gotta be approaching 30. 27. One minute. Chris is gonna go downstairs, have a couple of interviews for us after the game. Vu on the wing, gets it over to Pottist. Mitch Mahler in the ball game. He loses it. Manitowoc with a good hustle to get it back. I know the program says Mahler, but uh, that's not Mitch. A good job by the official there not to call a foul. 14 seconds left. Messman's shot in the lane is no good and North comes away with it. Two, one, and the buzzer. North a winner, 67 to 37. When we uh, come back from a short break, hopefully Chris will have a couple of players to do some interviews. I'll have some final scoring and uh, we'll wrap up this North win. Closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today.
You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just... Hey, we're back here with two uh, victorious freighters. Max, we'll start with you. You guys fell behind early tonight, but it didn't turn out such a bad shape, 30-point win. Yeah, it was good. We came out a little slow. We kind of lackadaisical a little bit, but we kind of found it midway through the first half. Um, started getting some plays to click and working as a team when we finally got to see everything show tonight. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, it's kind of a slow night, and watching you guys over the years so far, it's kind of been a slow, you know, grind for you a little bit, kind of working your rotations in, getting players in and things like that. Kind of like a typical start tonight, too, and yeah. then things were rolling. Uh, coach trying to find the right guys, or, you know, what do you think about that? Yeah, definitely. We're trying to figure out what's working best for us right now. We're pretty young, but we're making big strides, and that's the most important thing, and we're having fun doing it. Um, we're definitely getting to where we need to be, but we have a long ways to go yet. And you play a lot of guys, too. A lot of contributors off the bench. You go, yeah. you know, 11, 12 deep. Yeah, anytime, you know, it's balls to the wall. Anytime you're tired, you just grab your shirt, and then it's next <laughs> guy out. Yeah, and I think, you know, you could tell with, with everybody's ready to go and intensity. It doesn't matter who you put out there. They're ready and willing to go out there, and they know they're fighting for minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's partly because the bench is always engaged, and we know somebody come in off the bench and know exactly what's going on. They know where they're playing, who they're guarding, what, you know, what press they're in, what defense, all that stuff. Well, congratulations. We'll see Thank in a you. couple couple of weeks. Brent, well, let's just talk about your defense. Obviously, you're not big this year, so it, defense must be important. Yeah. Uh, you know we have we have a really edgy coach he's he's very <laughs> intense you know and we don't let our size get to us you know we know we're small and that's why we got to be intense in our press so we get deflections get steals and that leads to our buckets well i know as i mentioned to max too it doesn't matter who goes in there everybody's just tuned and they're all all intense and you know your practices must be great too oh yeah yeah our practices are great even the guys that are outside of practice you know not playing we're all engaged we're all learning you know every day get one percent better well, I know it's been a kind of a struggle for you guys offensively every, you know, every night. And tonight was another example of slow start, but good defense can lead to offense. And then you got the flow. I mean, you guys still almost got 70 points. Absolutely. I mean, you look at our first game and look at us now. I mean, our offense is, has grown tremendously. Um, I think, uh, you know, we just, we're just learning. We're learning every day and we're doing a good job of it. I kind of mentioned that in the opening too. I said, I think Coach Worth is trying to get a little bit better through December. So you guys are playing and peaking a little bit better in January. You know, like I said, you played some tough games already. Absolutely. But I think January and February is where he wants you guys to be. Absolutely. I mean, we started off the season one and four, I think. And coming, you know, we didn't want to, we didn't want to end that way. So we came, got two big wins in the last two games. And I, hopefully this pushes us, uh, pushes us forward. Yeah, and I think it's a nice win right before Christmas, too. You guys can take a couple days off, relax. I don't know if you guys ever relax, but <laughs> no, about rest a little bit. And then, you know, for that tournament next Absolutely. week. Absolutely. You know, you know we've got next couple days, we got practice. You know, keep getting better. It's going to be a good rest for games. Um, but then we're going to be ready for the holiday tournament. Yeah, and uh, we'll be back here in two weeks to see you guys play as well. So with that, we're going to send these two guys off to the locker room, and we'll send it back to Marty. Awesome. Living near the water. It's a dream come true for many, except when there's flooding or a hurricane. That's why people who live near lakes and rivers, by the ocean and bayside, are working with their local planners to make sure that protection from all sorts of natural disasters is part of the planning process. Learn more at planning.org. That's planning.org. Final score, Sheboygan North 67, Manitowoc 37. The downfall for the ships were 27 turnovers. They were led by Josh Huffman with 11. Their record drops to one in six overall, one in three in conference. North, on the flip side, were led by uh, Brett Win Brent Witter with 20 points and Max Schmidtke with uh, 14. You saw them in the interview with Chris. They did finish, the Raiders did, with 10 threes on the bright side. On the other side, however, they only made 12 out of 24 free throws. And that'll do it for us. Our next game will be Tuesday, January 9th, when Notre Dame comes to Sheboygan to play South. For my partner, Chris Wright, and the crew, I'm Mike Martin saying thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you down the road. Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem-solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. 
But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at grads. Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. What a sweetheart. Atta boy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man. <laughs>